this is Andre Suri. He will be telling you about the long history of, of Bike 9 and I guess the continuing history of Bike 9. Yeah. Uh, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Andre and I work at ISC um, since past year. Um, you might have known me from, from CZNIC working on another DNS server, but it's, that's the past. So uh, let's talk about Bind9 now. Um, Bind9 now, by now started in 2000, and the other things that came from 2000 GCC to uh, 95, do you remember it? Uh, Linux kernel 2.4. GNOME 1, 1.2, Qt 2.0, uh, Windows 2000. Um, it was the first camera phone, um, really. Uh, PlayStation 2 has launched it, and a new century started, um, well, in, only in pop culture and in the US. The rest of the world waited one year. Um, so, uh, the, well, the history for, uh, for uh, Bind is really long, and um, as you can imagine, that, that there's a technical debt. So, um, this is the, the versions uh, we had uh, uh, since uh, uh, 2018, and uh, sometimes it, there was uh, quite a lot of versions that we had to, the IC had to support, um, like four at a time uh, for, for some for some years, and there's that's, that's quite a lot of uh, maintenance burden. So we are trying also to, to, to change this, and I will talk about this uh, further. So uh, now comes by 912, that was released just uh, last month, uh, and it, it supports uh, new shiny things like NSEC aggressive use that uh, Peter from CZ will be speaking about um, uh, in some next presentation, Service Tale. Uh, this was a response to the, if you remember the attack at Dyne, where everything went black. Um, so, so this is like stretching the TTL. If you can't reach the the, the, the outer servers, it will stay in the cache for a little while longer. Uh, there's an update in the response policy interface uh, for response policy zones. Um, also, major refactoring has been done on some the most complex function. Um, somehow, there's a there's a link on this screen, but not on this screen. <laughs> so if you, if you look up the presentation uh, in the archives, there's a link for the presentation from my colleague Evan Hunt. Uh, he gave on the DNS ORC about the refactoring done in by 912. Uh, and I, I invite you to look at it. It's, it's quite interesting. Um, so and the refactoring uh, also made, us, made it possible to speed up uh, the bind by, by factor 6 for some cases. Um, the, there are CDS, CDNS tools contributed by Tony Finch, he's one of the biggest contributors along with Red Hat for, for Bind source code. And uh, there's an EDDSA support uh, when available in OpenSSL, and it, it's only in the development versions now, but w once it lands in OpenSSL, it will be available in Bind as well. So uh, let's talk about the future. Um, there are a couple of things we want to, want to do also for you as a DNS community, we want to make the development more open. Um, some steps have been already taken, like opening the Git repository. Um, the bug database is sort of open, but the default is confidential, and it needs a person to go and click, move this to the public queue, and uh, as you might well, imagine it doesn't happen so often because it, it's an extra step, you need to think about it, and sometimes you forget. So, we, we will try to do better in the, in the open development because I think this is important for for the open source community and also for DNS community to to develop in the open. Uh, we want to have a faster release cycles, um, and um, well, along with that goes the reduce support to, to reduce supported platforms, and also I will show you some new features we are planning and refactoring. So the open development. Um, we will open the, the issue tracker by, uh, by default. Uh, we will make it possible to have a public merge request, a public wiki, uh, public continuous integration, so uh, everything that's possible. And it's not a security bug. You, you know this is bind. Security bug, bugs might happen once in a lifetime. Um, and uh, uh, in the future, we, uh, along with the email mailing list, we would like to have a public web forum to discuss Bind and maybe, maybe DNS in general. So, um, so I'm announcing this uh, here for the first time. There's an ISC GitLab 
running at gitlabirc.org, surprisingly. It's a self-hosted instance and it, it's a work in progress, so not everything might work as expected um, yet. But uh, we will be deploying this during February um, and uh, making this our main development platform. Um, so you are all, uh, if you are interested in Bind and helping with Bind, invited to join the, our GitLab. Uh, and uh, uh, you will be able to like fill new issues there, f fill merge requests, and, and the usual stuff you would expect from an open source project. Um, I'm speaking very quickly, I think. Um, so I will, I'll have to slow down, otherwise we will be... Yeah, I would, minutes left, I yeah. 20. Yeah, yeah I'm, I will slow down. <laughs> 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 so, um, um, again, the fast release really cycle, um, this is something we... we <laughs> 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 um, um, this is something we, we, we decided already. So um, the, the odd numbers will be the development releases. And they will be released uh, as we go and as, as needed. Um, so 9.14, 9.15, 9.17 will be the development release. Uh, this is similar with if you know what Nginx does. And uh, the support for those releases will be best effort. So if you write a bug, we will fix it in the, in the Git and release in the you know, next cycle that might be monthly, that might be quarterly, um, depends on the on the severity of the bugs uh, in those releases. So, uh, from from those development releases, uh, once uh, the new features stabilize, we will spin off the, the stable release that will be just bump the number. And uh, so, from 9.14, um, the last release 9.14 will turn into 9.14, and. Uh, and this release will be supported until next stable release, which roughly translate supporting it for, for any year. Um, and uh, then every second stable release will be the so-called extended support version. That will be supported uh, uh, for four years in total with some overlap. I think this is much better um, shown in, in the table. So if you, if you look at the table, now, um, this is 2018, this column. Uh, so now we have version 9.9 ESV, and we will be, um, uh, there will be end of life for 9.9 and 9.10 this year. So 9.11 will turn into ESV, and this is a sort of exception before we switch to the new development model because it will be supported for six years in total. So uh, the, the blue squares are uh, the extended support version, uh, like years, so only like a major bug fixes uh, and security errors will be fixed in the extended support version. And, and the purple is the security only support. So this is the one year it overlaps. So if you, if you want stability, you would be using the ESV version. And during the, the last year, you would have to switch to um, the next ESV. And, and f for, the, for the development releases, this is 914, this is the orange box, and it will switch to be being stable uh, next year for 914. So 914 will be supported only for one year. Um, and so go on, and it goes on indefinitely. Um, so um, the, the other decision we, we ha had to make, because Bind supports almost anything, you know, um, uh, at every uh, every start of the release cycle, we will uh, evaluate the life cycle of the major Linux distributions, BSDs, and selected proprietary operating system like Mac OS X, uh, Windows, Solaris, maybe. Um, it, it also depends on what system we have access to because it's hard to support something we don't run we don't run in our labs. Um, so. Um, so, and at the beginning of each release cycle, we will say we will support these distributions, and uh, it will stay this way. So, um, uh, so, so there will be lists for each release, and you you will be um, uh, sure that nothing will break during the during all the release cycle. So. Any breakage could come only at the beginning of the of the release cycle of, of each major bind version. So, um, um, and and there will be several tiers. So, 
the, the supported year. Um, so th this basically means we will patch it. If you send us a bug report that it doesn't work, we will, we will fix it and we will patch it. And there will be best effort here. So it basically means if we have a time, uh, we will patch it. But it, it would be better if you send us the patch to, to support your uh, favorite platform. If, if we can, and, we, if, and if we can, we will incorporate the patch. And then there will be non-supported here, so this means don't even bother sending a patch, unless it's like it, an easy fix and it doesn't break anything else. It might, so there's no guarantee that it, this will be incorporated if you send us a patch. So uh, the, the, basically, the, the reason why we should, why we want to do that, is that this new list of the support platform will allow us to fully utilize a modern C language standard. Because now bind still can, bind 11 can still be compiled with the GCC 2.95, uh, which I don't think it's uh, reasonable in 2018. So, we, and, and the lib ISC, there is a whole set of library that, that are full of wrappers to, um, to fix the bugs that do no longer exist in modern operating systems. So we should rely more on standard libraries, use a POSIX, use uh, C11 uh, language constructs. Uh, we, we will probably stick with the subset that's supported by, by Windows to just make things easier for us, and so we don't have to um, have some wrappers around it. But, uh, but the, the, the visual compiler <coughs> subset is, is well, mostly complete, and uh, for the things we, we want to use. Uh, the, we should also use external libraries where, where appropriate, so not, not reinvent the wheel and focus on the things that's, that's important, and the important thing in, in DNS server is the DNS, not the, the supporting library. So that, um, basically the, the reason is that the, the code base of bind is so huge that we need to reduce the code base we have to maintain in bind to, to really have time to focus and maintain the DNS protocol. Um, so um, some of the planned features for, uh, for the development for this year is a local root zone copy uh, RFC 7706 like implementation that has been sponsored by ICANN. Uh, we also plan to add uh, uh, modules and hooks interface in bind, so um, um, the, this will allow us to do a few things. Like, um, well, basically, this means that you will be able to load your own dynamic module into um, into the query response processing and and modify the um, uh, the data uh, that, that will be sent to the client. And it will also allow us, um, as I see, to refactor some non-core functionality into the modules and make the, make the core, the bind core, lighter and easier to maintain. So, uh, and, this, and this is, <laughs> this is the, <laughs> this is the main feature. So every DNS server will be mining nodes and this is called DNS smart contracts and and as you know the DNS cache is a permanent storage if you if you haven't seen it uh, there's a again there's a link for uh, Jeff Houston presentation about the zombies in DNS and uh, and the, the, the ISC stocks will skyrocket of course if I show you in this the slide this is of course a joke for the record um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, the, the other thing we, we would like to do uh, in the future is refactoring. Um, um, I, was, I was surprised that this is a quote from Antoine's the Sun um, that uh, if anything at all, perfection is finally attained, not when there's enough, no longer anything to add, but when there's no longer anything to take away, when a body has been stripped down to its snakeness. And I think that this, this applies to bind because the, the, the code base has grown a lot in the years and it needs to be refactored um, and make it simpler. The functions uh, needs to be um, split and refactored. And th th this is something we, we really ought to do and we plan to do. Um, so basically, um, I want to say that Bind's not dead yet, baby. Bind's not yet dead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
So if you have any questions, uh, please go ahead and uh, please, please state your name and affiliation so I know the context if you ask a question. <laughs> uh, okay, Spawn of the Evil. My speaking. name is uh, Jane. I work for Oracle Dyn. Um, not speaking for Oracle not Dyn. For Oracle Dyn. <laughs> so I like the new release structure with the odd releases being chaos and the even ones being controlled chaos. Um, <laughs> but one thing that's happened, there was a time in the distant past when I was involved with Vine 9 where we tried to not add changes to release versions. That kind of went away because I didn't have enough control over the developers. It would be nice if the even versions didn't introduce new features or change syntax or things like that. As an operator, it's quite frustrating when you put in what you think is just a security fix and all of a sudden you have to go through all your configs and double check things. That's, that's basically the plan. Okay. That's basically, and, and because the, if, you, if you look at the release cycles, um, it's, they are quite short, it's just one reason, year. The reason I was confused is because you said in the purple it will be only security fixes, which to me implies that all kinds of other weird stuff... No, it is, it is like the, the blue is like the major bug fixes. Like, okay. And, and maybe adding new R records or sure. stuff yeah. like this. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. But uh, yeah, the developers are always the problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, will you also provide, for example, Debian packages of the development versions? And um, you used to love Debian, but you know the packages in Debian itself are quite old. Um, there, 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 there are several um, stuff that happened. Uh, I became the maintainer of this Debian package in uh, in Debian, so um, this will be in hopefully in much better shape. And um, there, are, there are already. Um, experimental uh, repository for Debian for 9.11 and 9.12 but uh, we haven't announced them yet because they are running on packages.suri.org which is not uh, uh, but if you, if you want to try them then you can go to packages.suri.org slash bind and there's uh, um, there are experimental packages that, uh, that even change the packaging structure so really not don't don't deploy them in production yet. Uh, they mine coins. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and they, they mine coins. Um, May there be packages which I can use in production? Yes, they, 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 there will be, but this is like, I, I did this like 14 days ago, so it needs to be put through some testing at least. Um, I'm, I'm running this on my servers, but uh, uh, but this, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a good tester. I'm, I'm good at breaking things, but I'm not, um, and not uh, like uh, punctual enough to be a tester, so this needs to be put for testing, and then, then IRC will announce uh, the official repositories for for uh, basically um, these three class: the stable, ESV, and development. There will, there will be like three repositories uh, that could be used by by external people, and that, that's not only for for Debian. We plan to have a Red Hat CentOS repositories as well. And that's also a uh, work in progress that should be available available soon. I think that Peter there yes, had... Um, I noticed on your GitLab it's not possible to view any of the things if you're not logged in. Will that change? Um, it's a little link yeah. down below it for... <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Super hard. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Can you tell us what just happened there for the stream? Oh, oh but, but Peter asked uh, that something is not visible in in a GitLab, the IC GitLab, and the response from the audience was that uh, it is there, but you need to find it, well, look it for harder. <laughs> go ahead. Now when you go into more modular design, do you expect there are more, going to be more exciting and say, exotic features they added to Bind? That's like they encrypted the queries. Just when I don't know. Uh, honestly, I don't know. But uh, well, my my goal at the, at the moment is to sta stabilize the, the thing and uh, like uh, make it more sustainable. Uh, and adding more exotic features goes against that goal. But uh, on the other hand, if if the exotic features is interesting enough. Uh, uh, then it might happen. Also, we might uh, be, we might have a like contrib repository for um, 
for modules contributed by other people because there there are already and and also the reason why we opened the GitLab is to invite more people to be involved with with Bind and to be like more open to to the things we accept from 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 the public. So so uh, so to answer your like to answer your question, I don't expect. Uh, it to happen like soon, very soon from the ISC. But if somebody comes and and says, "Hey, I wrote this cool module. Could you put it somewhere at the ISC GitLab so you know other people can find it?" Then, then yes, the answer would be yes. Sorry, I have to stop. Oh. Oh, okay. One last question. One last question. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, <laughs> would the ESV version be released in like January, February time? I'm working you mean canonical Ubuntu releases in April and it'll <laughs> you, you mean the 911? Uh, not the 911, but like the 916, for example. Do you aim to release that in January? Uh, the, the <laughs> we are not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> but it, basically, it. it <laughs> well, th 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 that's a good question. And uh, sorry, yeah. um, and we might talk to to more maintainers about about this how how it would be best for for canonical for Debian. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the question I need to answer myself. <laughs> and, <laughs> and and for for Red Hat, uh, so and probably others. But I think those are the major ones we need to uh, take care about. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. All.